Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast, episode 126, The Mighty Service of Women. A guided Christian meditation on Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. I'm Chaplain Jared and I work as a hospice chaplain. I've also worked as an ICU chaplain and my purpose in making this podcast is to help you to find more peace in your life, to be open, to be changed and improved by the Spirit of God and to feel His love in your life. I also want to welcome our special guest for today. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Jared. I'm your mom. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the podcast. All right, so today we will be doing our Alexia Divina style meditation, which will consist of six main parts. So first we'll begin with a relaxation, followed by a reading from the Bible. We'll reflect on that meaning of an opportunity for prayer, contemplative silence, and then an application slash visualization step. So find a place where you can sit now comfortably for the next 20 minutes or so. Allow yourself to fully root into the piece of furniture or the floor. Feel your body with the weight pulling down on it. Gently begin to calm and relax. Your goal at first is not to make any forceful changes, but just to observe what's happening in your body and to allow it to unfold naturally. As you sit here breathing softly, you feel the muscles in your shoulders, back, neck, face, or anywhere else. They may be a little tight. You begin to unwind. As you feel your muscles unflex, peace begins to enter your heart. If any any disturbing thought comes to mind, realize that it's a temporary one and it will pass and bring your attention back to sitting in, to taking a nice, deep, clean, and easy breath. All of the cares of the world can fade away for this moment as we put our intention on listening to the word of the Lord. So now in this moment, place your focus entirely on the words of scripture and pay special attention whatever ideas or words stick out to you as you listen. And be open to receive whatever message God has for you. Luke chapter 8 verses 1 through 3, first from the NIV. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were there with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household. Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. Continue to reflect on the meaning of this scripture now.
And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Continue reflecting on this message now. In the United States, we celebrate Mother's Day on the day that this episode will come out. So to do that, I wanted to invite a special guest to share some thoughts with us. Well, Mother's Day is a wonderful day to celebrate our mothers or the women in our life who have nurtured us as a mother would. How grateful we are for these women. Not all women have had the opportunity to be a mother, and not all women have felt like they've been the mother they wish they could have been. Life can be difficult and hard, with many challenges and opportunities for growth. I'm in the golden years of life now, and I've had a long time to ponder and reflect. I was blessed with a wonderful husband and five beautiful children. When I was 31, my sweetheart passed away on a business trip, leaving me alone to raise our five children. The oldest was ten, and our baby was two. At that moment, everything changed. At 31, I was not prepared to take all the financial responsibilities in supporting and nurturing our family on alone. It's not hard for you to imagine how I must have felt. There was never enough time to accomplish everything I wish I could have done for my family at the level I wanted to. But through these many young years... I've tried to keep the Savior at the center of my life and serve not only Him, but others in the best way I could. I love today's scripture because it tells us about some of the women that surrounded the Savior. They came as they were, with the challenges that they were dealing with. They were not perfect, but they loved the Lord and offered what they had, their time and their resources. I'm sure... There were many things that needed their time and attention, but it was he whom they chose to serve. I am sure that he was grateful that he loved them and blessed them for their efforts. So many times we feel lacking that we are not enough, but if we center our lives on the Savior and serve with love, it is enough. I also feel this scripture is very powerful because it demonstrates how God uses us in whatever form we are, in whatever failings we've had in the past, whatever challenges that we experience. He can change us. He can use us for His good and His purposes. And above all, He loves us, calls us friends, and wants the best for us eternally. Continue now to reflect on this message.
please join me now in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we lift our voices in prayer. Remembering the past as well, looking forward to the future, realizing the life is never all that it possibly could be. But the life that we have, we are grateful for. We seek to improve ourselves day by day, to receive thy love into our hearts, and to continually move forward along the path thou hast laid out for us. Guide us and inspire us and fill us with peace and love as we reflect on the wonderful work of mothers and women everywhere and the important role that they have in thy plan. Inspire us to be more aware of their service and to show it more gratefully. In this we say in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I invite you to continue in prayer now. Now in these next few moments, just sit in contemplative silence, absorbing the love of God and feeling His presence in your life. Now we get to the final step, which is application-based. Whatever insights that you've gained, whatever feelings you've had, whatever experience you've had, try to summarize that inside of your own mind right now. And more importantly, try to visualize how you can make actionable change in the future with God's help. Visualize that change as though it's happening in your mind's eye right now. Who do you need to talk to? What do you need to do? What are things that you can do actively to embrace the message you've received and allow it to change your life?
Thank you for joining me today on the podcast. If you want more information about the podcast or ways to reach out to me, you can go to christianmeditationpodcast.com. Again, I have FAQs. You can listen to all the episodes there. And you can also find a link to how you can financially support the podcast if it's something that's in your budget. Or you can go directly to patreon.com forward slash Christian Meditation Podcast. So a little update. The Android app for the podcast has actually been released. It's called Recenter with Christ. And you can find it in the Google Play Store. That's a free app that you can download, which is basically a, a streamlined way in which you can listen to the podcast, which has a sleep feature. You can go to sleep at night listening to it or wake up in the morning with a time with an alarm clock function. The iOS app is still in review right now. For some reason, it got a little snag. I don't know why, but as soon as that's released, I'll let you know via the email newsletter. I want you to consider this question and answer in depth to someone else or to me through email or or what have you. In what way has your past experience allowed you to have a unique opportunity to serve? In what way has your past experience given you a unique opportunity to serve? Try to write this answer out or explain it in depth to somebody because that's the way we learn best. And here's a final thought I want you to consider. You are enough. The struggles that you are going through in your life are not a surprise to your Father in Heaven. He knows your every desire. He knows your needs. And He gives us just enough. Sometimes we feel as though we can't get by, and yet somehow we do. We have everything that we need. And as we support each other, we can find greater strength. One of the original translations, one of the manuscripts of this scripture actually said that these women were supporting Him instead of them. In other words, their actions were directly supporting Jesus. They weren't doing miracles. They weren't doing the healing. They weren't raising people from the dead, but they were supporting that work. As it can be for us, as we take all that we are, flawed and imperfect as we are, and we bring that to God, He can make more of it than we can. He loves you so profoundly, and He wants the best for you. Each day, we can try a little harder and be compassionate on ourselves when we trip and fall, because that's what Jesus would do for us. And this I say in Jesus' name, amen.